you may have had several attempts, either locally or in New York City, to try to get tickets to see Hamilton. Good luck with that. Uh, but if you happened to be at Elmer's in Ashfield on the right day when my family was there and our next speaker would bribe my three-year-old with a cookie to perform Hamilton in its entirety, essentially, <laughs> you would have gotten at least a s snapshot of what Hamilton is like. And while she's no longer there, uh, it's a joy to hear her story about what brought her to us. Please welcome formerly of Elmer's, Nan Parati. And I want to say, there's nothing like hearing a three-year-old say, well, how does it start? How does a bastard? Bastard, whore, son, yeah, all that stuff. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Worth two cookies. <laughs> so, back in 2005, I was happily minding my own business down in New Orleans when my friend Klondike, who you may know, came to me and said, I work on a festival up in Greenfield called the Green River Festival, and we need signs. Can you come up for one year and make signs for us, and we'll be good? And I said, Greenfield, that's near Ashfield. I have friends in Ashfield. I could do that. Yes, I'll come up. And so I did, and by day I worked on the Green River Festival. By afternoon and evening, I hung out in Ashfield. And I thought, this is a cool place. This is a very different from New Orleans, very, very cool. Wouldn't it be fun if, and I actually said this out loud, out loud, I said, wouldn't it be fun if for some reason I couldn't go back to New Orleans? And God heard me. And he said, oh, that's what you want? Okay, watch well, this. Boom! He and he created Hurricane Katrina to take out my house, everything that was in it, and everybody else's houses too, which made me feel really bad. Be careful what you wish for. And that's how I ended up in Ashfield, for good. So the thing that interested me most was this tiny little store down there on Main Street called Elmer's Store. It had been there forever. Elmer himself had died back in the 90s, but every, everybody else had picked it up and taken it and run with it until about 2002 when it closed for good. And every day after it closed, people would come by and walk down the street and say, you know, somebody should open that store again. They should come along and buy that place and open it up. What they really meant was you know, Elmer should come back from the dead and open that place up again. Because internationally, this is an international phenomenon, but the Asheville version of it is a guy is walking down the street and he meets a bear, a fisher cat, and a wolf. And he says, hey, and they say, hey, and they carry on. Guy keeps walking down the street. The next creature coming down the street is somebody from away. Somebody from someplace else coming down the street with big ideas. Because the thing is, a wolf, a fisher cat, any of those things, you know what they're going to do. They're programmed, they're good, we're all good, you're going to eat me, we're good. Okay, we know. Somebody from away, they could do anything. Anything. And I don't care where you are in the world, and it's scary. So here I come down the street and I'm going, oh, look at that little store, wouldn't that be fun? I, sh I should buy that. And that was scary to everybody. My heart was in the right place, though. I put a survey in the Asheville News, and I said, if I were to buy this place, what would you like it to be? And I was being culturally sensitive. And they said, we've already got a place for lunch. We've already got a place for dinner in the lake house and country pie. But what we need is a breakfast restaurant. And I said, oh, I could do that. Now, I don't cook at all. I've never even worked in a restaurant before, but I could do that. I could do that. And so I set out opening a breakfast restaurant and then later on added lunch and dinner and a bar so we could stay open. And in all of my research on how to do this, I realized you cannot swing a dead cat around here without hitting a farm. And I thought, we could serve local food. This would be so cool. Everybody in Asheville would be so excited. 2005, they weren't doing that quite yet up here, but I was very, very, very excited. So I called the farmers and I said, hi, my name is Nan and I just bought Elmer's store and I'm going to turn it into a restaurant and I need some bacon and some eggs and some um, corn and squash. And do you have that? And they said, yup. Because in the South, we talk a lot. And in the North, they say, yup, <laughs> which is hard for me. So I got used to that and I bought their stuff. And I thought, this is going to be so great. We're going to serve their food, and they're going to love me, and we're going to have be one big happy family. And so we bought the food, and we cooked it, and we served it. And those people from Ashfield were all over at the lake house eating standard, regular old American food. And they had no interest whatsoever in what I was serving. In fact, they called me 
earthy, crunchy girl because I was trying to serve local food. But they weren't interested at all. We got the, we got the people who came later, but the real hardcore, solid, Revolutionary War name, same people, uh -uh, they weren't coming in at all. <laughs> it's hard. Y'all try living in Ashfield. Uh huh. <laughs> so I tried everything. I tried gift certificates, giving away food, just being nice, special events. I tried everything, but they didn't care at all. The only thing they wanted to eat local was something they shot themselves or they pulled out out of their backyard. But if they're paying for it, they're going for standard American traditional food. So it went that way for about eight years. It, uh, it was hard. Um, until one day, the lake house got sold to new people. Mm hmm <laughs> Now, they had lived in Asheville since longer than I had, but they were from away, and plus, they were new to the restaurant business, and they wanted to serve local food. <laughs> so, that pissed everybody off. They ran out the back door of the lake house and said, where are we going to go now? And they had all these gift certificates I'd given them, so they came over to Elmer's to try it. And they found, hey, this is good. And she's nice. And she's, she'll do stuff that they used to do at the lake. This was fun. So we all had a great time, a really good time. So much fun that a couple of the people who came in agreed to do commercials for me, which we did, and ran on Bear Country Radio. Brian Dickinson, who you may also know, he wrote his own commercial and said, this is Brian Dickinson, Big Bry, and I found a new little place in Ashfield called, um, new eight years later, a new little place called Elmer's. Y'all should come in. And one woman told me that she ran through a red light when she heard that. It was so weird hearing Brian Dickinson talk about Elmer's, but it's a true story. So we all got along great. We were jumping around and having a wonderful time for the next few years until... About maybe six months ago, some people came to me and said, would you like to buy Elmer's? It looked easy. Would you like to buy, or would you like to sell Elmer's rather? And I said, oh, hell yeah, I am tired. I am so tired. I am so tired. So yeah, so they bought it, and they're really from a way, bless their hearts. They're from Argentina and Germany. So they have a real high hill to climb. But I'm working with them, and I'm thinking at some point we're going to get there. But I'd like to say, in the world of local food in Ashfield, in the words of the late, great Ernie Cato, while I may not have brung the pumpkin to town, that would have been Cisa and the farmers, I helped carve it. And for that, I am very, very proud. Thank you very much. <laughs>